Hi, this is Jill Zarin, and I am going to read my newsletter dated October 14, 2012. Hi, how are you, everybody? Boy, do we have a lot of catching up to do. First, I just finished filming a special episode of Andy Cohn's Watch What Happens Live that's going to air Monday night, tonight, October 15th at 11 p.m., one night only. I hope you tune in. Why? I flipped the tables for a few minutes and got to ask your favorite talk show host a few questions you've been dying to ask him yourself. At least that is what you've been tweeting and emailing me for the last 15 months. So, why did they fire me? Are they happy with their decision? We filmed for 44 minutes, and it will be edited down to 22 minutes. I was hoping they would extend his show for one hour, but I don't think that happened. It will be interesting to see what was cut out in editing. I promise you, I remember exactly the entire interview and will share anything I thought was important that you didn't get to hear. I also have lots of noise in my head like, why didn't I ask this, that, or the other thing? I should have followed up with this, that, or the other thing. But as my mom said afterwards, because I called her right away, if hindsight was twenty twenty, we would all be, well, you know the answer, don't you? With that being said, I have a surprise. I asked my sister Lisa if she would do a follow-up interview with me and let me talk about how I felt being face-to-face -face with Andy for the first time and bring up questions that I wanted to ask but either was too afraid to or didn't think of until it was too late. So tune into the Lisa Wexler Show at 4.30 on Tuesday, October 16th. You can call in at 914-693-5700. Find out how to listen on lisawexler.com, and you can listen to it anywhere in the country, live or afterwards. She has a podcast that's available on her website. Since my last letter to you, a lot has happened. I don't want to bore you with too many details, but we'll give you an overview, even though it's very long. We moved out of the Hamptons on Labor Day weekend, and we went right to the U.S. Open. We saw the match where Federer lost, and that was very upsetting. Then it was New York Fashion Week. I hate when everything happens at the same time. I like things spread out. I went to the best part of Fashion Week, the gifting suites and luxury lounges. Okay, shoot me. I like the free stuff, but who doesn't? Jonathan, Bobby's son, and I played golf at the Eric Trump Foundation annual golf charity event, of which I am honored to be a board member of. After the most fun day of golf, I think I was the only girl golfing, Bobby came from the city to meet me at Trump Briarcliff, which we are members of because we bought it at the last year's auction and then bought it again at this year's auction uh, for the dinner part of the event. Wait until you hear who I was sitting with. Are you ready? Drita from Mob Wives, who I love. Carla from Mob Wives, sort of quiet, and I love her too. Teresa and Juicy Joe. Oh, my God, it was right after the reunion, and yes, we did gossip, and I found out everything. Lisa Lampanelli, former apprentice player, comedian, and yes, my friend since we both joined the Friars Club like 100 years ago, was the entertainment, and we all had an amazing time raising lots of money for St. Jude's Hospital. A few days later, I had a photo shoot for my new Jews, Jill's, <laughs> Jill's Aaron, Jill's Aaron jewelry line and squeeze couture in my store's Aaron Fabrics. That is always fun. Of course, Ginger was barking at everyone. The Jewish holidays are always in the fall, and this time of year, our family comes together. No matter what, no matter where. My parents came up from Boca and stayed with us this time. My sister made the first meal, and my Aunt Cookie made the second. I decided to start a family tree at the dinner table, and that led me to start a Facebook family group. I am happy to report over 40 people in my family from all over the world have found it and hope to one day have a big, giant family reunion. I also sadly found out that Arthur Modell, who a lot of people don't know, um, former owner of the Cleveland Browns, then the Baltimore Colt, Colt was my second cousin and recently passed away. Uh, so I, I caught up with some family relatives who had attended his funeral. Bobby and I took Jonathan and Sarah to Yum Kipper Services, and for the first time, I set up my computer in the living room and was able to see the live feed from our temple for the services that we missed. We all, meaning my mother, my father, uh, Jonathan Wexler, Bobby and I, and even Jonathan and Sarah, sat in the living room to listen and to pray. It was wonderful, and I posted it on Twitter, and lots of people, Jewish and not, were able to watch and listen to the prayers for the Jewish New Year. Shana Tovah to everyone. 
In the in between all this, I was invited to sit on the first new Friday panel on the Wendy Williams show to discuss topics that were on her mind. Squeeze Couture was mentioned on the new Steve Harvey show, and we offered a special promotion for 24 hours on Good Morning America. What a great month for Squeeze Couture. Check out some of the new Shaper tights at SqueezeCouture.com and for locations nearest you, uh, either in a store or online. They really work and hold you in your tummy. I mean, really, who needs a tummy tuck after you've tried on Squeeze Couture? On September 27, 2012, I was honored at Kings of Kings in Mill Basin, Brooklyn, for Women of the Year. I was so humbled and honored to receive this from the community and was able to share it with 500 business people who attended. What a moment. Two days later, Bobby and I took Jonathan and Sarah, who is the managing, for those of you who don't know, Sarah is, was my assistant and I promoted her, and now she's managing director of all Jill Zarin brands, to London, and we stayed at 51 Buckingham Gate, this very cool, like, hotel, sweet hotel right near Buckingham Palace, for a week. As some of you know, we are very good friends with Robbie and Ida Williams. Ida just gave birth to the most beautiful baby, Well, Allie and Lila were also the cutest little girls, and her name is Teddy. Shout out to Kelly Ben-Simone, who also has a daughter named Teddy. I held her in my arms for 45 minutes, and I melted. Boy, does that bring back memories. Since we were so close to Paris, by train, it only takes two hours with the new channel. Well, it's not new anymore. Sarah and I hopped the train to stay with my girlfriend, Tessa. In fact, I mentioned Tessa from Paris on Real Housewives of New York for those who... um, like fast facts. She lives like a princess there with her fiance. We even went to Boucheron, this very fancy jewelry store with her to buy a bracelet that her boyfriend bought her for over 150,000 euro. They brought out the good bubbly and cookies and we tried on millions of dollars of jewelry. I mean, honestly, how much fun was that? Bobby and I have always loved Europe and I did look at a few apartments near the Eiffel Tower on Avenue Montagna. We are in flux right now and can go anywhere to live that we want now that Allison's off to college. Hamptons, Florida, Los Angeles, maybe London or Paris. We did have one very important business meeting while we were there, and I'm thrilled to share that we will be selling Squeeze and Jill Zarin jewelry to one of the largest retailers in the world. When the ink is dry, I will shout it out from the top of the Eiffel Tower, but until then, it is locked in the vault with all of the other secrets I have on all the other housewives and hosts. Wink, wink. After dropping a few dollars, euros, in the left bank on my honey and on my daddy at Hermes and Jonathan because it was his upcoming 30th birthday, we had lunch with Andrew, not sure how to pronounce his last name, it's N-G, Eng, Eng, in his showroom, I was introduced to him by Tessa, uh, fashion show, he has a beautiful line of clothing at Bergdorf Goodman. We ran back to the apartment, grabbed our luggage, and ran to catch the train back to London. By the way, don't forget, you need passports to travel on trains between cities. Thank goodness I remembered that and we had them because how easy, you know, going from London to Paris, you may not take your passport out and think that a license is okay. It is not okay. Even though it's part of the EU, you need to have passports whenever you travel out of any country. Our last night in London, we split up. Bobby and the kids went to Christie's auction house for the very first, for the, for the very publicized James Bond 50th anniversary charity. Though he bid on a few items, including the car, it was a madhouse with silent bidders on the phone from all over the world. So without me there to push him, he didn't buy anything. I went out with my girlfriends to the most amazing restaurant, Senor Sassi near Harrods. Oh my God, it was so delicious. We all had risotto, um, we all had, uh, Uh, truffle, truffle risotto. Truffles are in season. As I was eating my last bit of dessert, who shows up with umbrellas? My Prince Charming, Bobby. He told the taxi driver from Christie's on his way back to the hotel to please drive by our restaurant because he figured out the timing, which Bobby always does, to pick me up since it was raining and nearly impossible to catch a taxi. That is the kind of man, girls, who are single that you want to marry. Someone who is so thoughtful that even though we were separate, he was thinking of me and worried that I wasn't going to get back to the hotel safely. I mean, I was sort of shocked, but not really. Isn't he delicious? 
Our last meal there was home cooked. My dear girlfriend, Mira, lives on Park Street. For those of you who don't know, it's like Fifth Avenue and 68th in a gorgeous townhouse overlooking one of the few shared private gardens who knew there are shared private gardens for 30 million, you know, pounds behind the row of houses. Neighbors like the prince of this and the exiled king of that are among her neighbors in the shared garden. Imagine their Sunday barbecues in the backyard. Um, pass the ketchup, please. Ginger get, o- Ginger, get over here. Our last stop was to kiss Teddy goodbye. We took a walk around the block while she napped. Um, it was so cute. You know, Robbie was uh, pushing the stroller. I mean, just watching him fall, you know, so in love with his newborn baby is... Um, you know, tearful to say the least. And of course, security all around. We took a walk around the block while she napped. And then I got to give her lots of hugs and kisses. I wish I could share the photos, but out of respect to my friend's privacy, I can't. Lastly, you know how much I love to complain about airlines or anything for that matter. But, but I will give credit where credit is due too. We flew home on American Airlines. Bobby said the steak, of course we were in first class, was the best he ever ate. I mean, honestly, wasn't he exaggerating as in Peter Luger? But he says not. The sauce was to die. The service was outstanding. And the TV selection, all right, I have one thing to complain about, not so good. But I did watch an entire season of Homeland on my iPad, so I didn't really care about that. But I did check out the movie selection. We were first off the plane. There was no line at immigration like the first time in my life. And shocking, there was actually someone who had taken our luggage off the carousel already and lined up the luggage, which was waiting for us. So we flew out of security and were in our car. From the time we landed until we got into the car, it took, and I'm telling you, I am not even exaggerating, only 22 minutes, half the time than it usually arrives when we come in from Fort Lauderdale. So thank you, American Airlines. We kissed the ground when we arrived, which we always do. I mean, honestly, everyone, I mean, we love to travel. We love to go all over the world. But no matter where we go or how long we go, we always like kiss, literally kiss the ground when we arrive. There is nothing like America and there's no place like home. America is the beautiful. Please tune in to Andy Cohn on Bravo tonight at 11 o'clock. Uh, October 15th, one night only. I will talk to Andy exclusively about why he fired us and what really happened with Bethany behind the scenes. If you want me back on television, people are watching and will be looking at the ratings to see who is watching. So please spread the word. If you want to express your thoughts and opinions to Bravo, you can write to Andy Cohn, Lauren Zalesnik, who's the president of NBC Universal, uh, or Francis Berwick, president of Bravo and Style Media at 30 Rockefeller Center, New York, New York, 10020. You can also leave comments at bravotv.com as well as tweet Andy Cohn at Bravo Andy. They actually do listen. And in fact, you'll see one of the answers to me of why he let us go was because of social media. So they do read and listen. Below are a few of my favorite new pieces of jewelry. Of course, you knew I had to mention that. And you can see all of it on Jill's, no, some of it on jillsarenjewelry.com and lordandtaylor.com. Uh, right now, fun and affordable starting at $18 and up. So click on the newsletter to see more. And of course, you can always 